It is now confirmed by FIFA this week. Goal line technology at the next World Cup. But will it prevent the controversies that have hit football in the past? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, the international football body FIFA has confirmed goal line technology will be used at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. It's the first time the sport will use the high-tech method of determining whether a ball has crossed the line or not. And it's welcome news to many fans and officials who have seen a fair share of controversial refereeing over the years. Goal line technology is already used in other sports like tennis and cricket. Well, let's take a look at the statement FIFA has issued uh, on this after a successful implementation of goal line technology at the FIFA Club World Cup in Japan in December 2012. FIFA has decided to use GLT at the FIFA Confederations Cup in Brazil in 2013 and at the 2014 FIFA World Cup in Brazil. FIFA president Sepp Blatter has said he changed his mind about goal line technology after a controversial decision during the 2010 World Cup. The decision in question is etched into every English fan's mind. It came as England were losing 2-1 to Germany in the round of 16. Frank Lampard took a shot that hit the crossbar, then bounced in and out of the goal. Although the ball had clearly crossed the line, the referee disallowed the goal and Germany went on to win 4-1. Sepp Blatter later apologised and promised to reopen the goal line technology debate. I have uh, changed my attitude towards uh, technology uh, because of uh, the, the shot of kick, Lampard's kick in, uh, in South Africa um, when uh, the score was not allowed, but the, the ball was behind. I was, I was so shocked that uh, the score was not allowed, that I made uh, uh, the uh, a declaration only the next day, because the, the day I was really so shocked when I have seen that. And, uh, and then, uh, naturally, then we started uh, to, to change uh, our mind and uh, to look for a better uh, system. I, I would say the error, uh, which is made generally, that the assistant referee is, is a, a goal judge. He cannot be a goal judge because uh, and the human eye cannot uh, 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 follow the speed of the ball unless the ball is only rolling. There is a, a, the speed more than 26 kilometers. The human eye cannot follow it. But not everyone is in favor of the move. Least of all, Michel Platini, the president of Europe's football governing body UEFA and a former player himself. He introduced an alternative at the Euro 2012 tournament in Poland and Ukraine of putting extra officials near the goal line to assist the referee. Platini, like many others in the game, believes that decisions on the field should be left to humans for better or for worse, as they have always been. Si demain, si demain. Why don't we have technology on the byline rather than the actual goal line? If tomorrow someone handballs it on the line, if a defender stops the ball with his hand on the line and the referee doesn't see it, we can't just have goal line technology here. We also need sensors to see if someone has actually handballed it. We need cameras to see if there should have been a goal or not. I'm not against goal line technology. I'm against technology itself because then it's going to invade every single area of football. Well, joining me now to uh, talk about this further, let's bring in uh, my guests from London. Luther Blissett, former professional England player. Luther is now ambassador for the Show Racism in the Red Card campaign. Show Racism, the Red Card, rather. Also from London, Johnny Gould, a television and radio sports journalist. Johnny's also CEO of Sports Media, a news network on sport. And from Dubai, we have Merdad Masoudi, producer for FIFA's show Football Mundial, and Merdad was also a FIFA press officer during the 1998 World Cup in France. Good to have you all uh, with us, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Luther, I want to start with you. Um, is this a necessary and, and welcome step for the game of football, do you think? Uh, well, I personally think it's, um, it's about time they did something about it. I mean, we've seen what Platini's done with the, with the extra officials on the, on the goal line for um, corners and set pieces and stuff like that, and yes, you think to yourself, but what else do they do? I mean, they, you know, they look a bit redundant most of the time when they stood around there and they miss so many things anyway. For me, the goal line technology is about time they did it because we've seen so many occasions now where 
goals have been disallowed and occasionally been given when the ball hasn't actually crossed the line. So it's, um, it's quite ironic that it happened with England back in 66 and in, in England and Germany. And then it happened again during the last World Cup uh, also and it's been into two nations again. So for me, it's about time they actually did do something about it. And I'm really pleased to see they bring it into um, the goal line technology as long as for me it only stays in um, goal line technology. I don't want it to be brought in any other aspect of the game because I think then it ruins what already is a fantastic spectacle. Yeah, I, I want to bring up that point about uh, where, where this they, there is a danger that they, they may start bringing this into other aspects of the game in, in, in a moment, Luther, because that is a, uh, certainly a very valid point. But I want to put the same question then to Johnny Gould. Goal line technology, is it long overdue in your opinion or, or an unnecessary interference in, in the way the game's currently officiated? It's a jolly good idea, of course, and it would take the absolute controversy away and put football on a, uh, on a par with other sports as well. Uh, but uh, the other issue that I have and a problem with it is that it separates the grassroots from the elite of football. It means that the World Cup final and Hackney Marshes was effectively exactly the same game until recently, until UEFA decided to bring in more referees along various touchlines and now with goal line technology. And the more you separate uh, the game at its heart, which was all about the same shin pads, the same regulation size of pitch, the same regulation size of goal, pitches for better or worse, the game was the same from top from bottom. Um, with all due respect, um, goal line technology is only possible at the elite end of the game. And I'm worried that uh, it will change the top end from the bottom end for good. Meda Masudi, you, you, uh, you agree with that point that this uh, the technology is, is obviously too expensive, as, as Johnny says there, to filter down to the lower levels of the game and that, that compromises the, the universal appeal of football? There's no doubt about that. I concur with Johnny, but I would like to point out another fact. Uh, at all football games that are televised around the world, whether the game is played in Botswana, London or Tokyo or anywhere else in the world, if a game, if and when a game is televised, the fourth official has a monitor sitting next to him. And all officials are now connected to, to each other via radio headsets. And I'm not talking about uh, instant video replay that is applied in basketball at NBA, uh, National Hockey League, uh, ice hockey in North America, and many other sports. And I mean, we should also remember that football is a different sport from tennis, for instance. Tennis. The ball is very small. It constantly, at high speed, crosses or hits the line one way or another. And it's impossible for that to make it, for a human being to make a decision at such high speed. Football, a goal, a, a, a ball passes, the whole of the ball passes the line or not, happens maybe once every, once every decade. And as, Platini, as Michel Platini mentioned, it's insane to invest and spend millions of euros or dollars or pounds or whatever currency you want to call it on something that happens so infrequently in the game. FIFA rightly made a change, a very simple change after the 1990 World Cup in Italy, the, the back pass rule. The, the game changed forever and for better. When you look at some, some of the footage from pre-1990 World Cup, 1966 World Cup, or any league or anywhere in the world, the ball was passed back to the goalkeeper, back to the defender. The last four or five minutes was almost played between the defenders and, and Luther Blissett would have remembered that. As a striker, he would have been frustrated seeing the ball being passed, passed back and forth, the keeper pick up, picking up the ball. And, and there are many other issues in the game that would make the, the game a, a far better game to watch as far as the TV viewership is concerned than the goal line technology. And other, like time wasting. There are ways to make the game more attractive. And as Bish Platini said, humans make mistakes. But even th there is a solution for that. The fourth official, if allowed to have communication with the official in the middle of the pitch, and there is no need to stop the game, the fourth official can say in or out. Very simple. What we, you and I saw, the fourth official saw in Bloemfontein. That, uh, the ball passed the line. It would, but because the fourth official at the moment, according to the laws of the game, cannot communicate that to the referee in the middle of the pitch, we are, we, we are, 
the FIFA and the world football is left with an embarrassment that everyone around the world watches, but the referee, with, with, with no fault of his own. There is no, no one blames the referee. The referee is a human being. There are times that he's 10, 20 meters from the ball and the ball moves at such high speed and pace. There's no human being in the world. And Superman is in, only in the movies. There's no human being in the world that can detect the ball, whether it's past the line or All not. Right. But the fourth let's, official who's sitting... Let's put some of that, let's put some of that back to, uh, to Luther then. I mean, the point was made earlier that um, as, as, as a former player, I'm sure you've uh, felt your, your frustrations at uh, uh, poor refereeing um, course, decisions. Yeah. But I, I dare say you've also um, benefited, uh, from your, or the teams that you've been on have benefited from, also from some questionable uh, refereeing decisions. Yeah, it's always been that way. And, you know, it's a big talking point between sub spectators and players alike um, after the game's over. But the problem, the problem is that when you say it evens itself out, when it happens in an, an important game, which when you think about some of the playoff games that we play here in England, if you're in the championship and you could end up in the Premier League, you're talking about now in excess of 100 million pounds that you could be, um, you know, you're opening yourself up to if you get, if you actually win it. And it could, it could fall or, or, or succeed on the fact that um, the referee has seen the ball cross the line or not. I mean, that sort of decision, you know, can make or break a football club. It can make and break individuals when it sort of things happen. So for me, goal, goal line technology with this new system has got to be something that they've got to bring in because yes, I agree you could maybe do that with officials, but the doubt would be totally taken away if it's ever done by, uh, by machines because if they use it solely for the goal line and if the ball crosses the line, I think it works perfect when you do that. If well, what they about start the point? to infiltrate other sides of the game, then it doesn't work the same. Uh, I want to ask you about the point that Johnny Sorry. made earlier, that this, the, the, the concern about that this ruins the sort of democratic appeal of football uh, from, from the grassroots level on yeah. up and, and, and the game isn't the same anymore once you, well, once the, you look well, at it I hear, what, I hear what John is. The game, the, game, the game is not the same now because you look at the standard, especially if you talk about the pitches that we play on in this country, where, where you play on on a Saturday and a Sunday, um, you play um, non-league and that sort of thing. A lot of the pitches are shocking compared to what you get in the Football League. So in that way, there's already a disparity there already when it, when it goes to, when, it, when you start talking about the surfaces you play on. You know, the, the, the game in the professional game now, with the finances and everything involved in the game, that's what dictates that the game has got to look out for um, these incidents, which could cost clubs money, get managers to sack, get clubs in all sorts of financial difficulties. So this sort of thing has got to be sorted out. Well, you don't get the very same um, consequences if a mistake is made um, lower down. Yes, you know, teams may not get um, promotion or get relegated on the back of it, but the, the far-reaching effects of it is nothing like as it does when it goes, uh, when it happens in a professional game, which is for me the reason why um, technology is a vital part of it now that they finally got around to doing it because um, had that been the, the case in um, in South Africa, England, you never know, might have gone on and got something out of that game rather than getting beat 4-1. So it, 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 for me, it, it changes the game and we all know goals are a crucial part of the game that we're all in and we all love to see the ball fizzing around and around the goal wherever, um, whenever we watched it. So for the fact that we can actually Sorry. see clearly if the ball has gone in or is not, you know, it counts for an awful lot. Johnny, that's a valid point, isn't it? I mean, a, a bad decision in some cases can make the difference between uh, going home or, or, or advancing or, in some cases, uh, getting relegated or staying up. I mean, isn't, isn't this sort of technology helpful in, in, in critical moments like that? As proud Englishmen, uh, both Luther and myself, will uh, be in unanimous agreement that, of course, had Lampard's goal gone in and uh, counted, then at two all, obviously, we would have thrashed Germany in the second half, but for <laughs> losing 4-1 instead. That's a given. Uh, however, the other point is, let's not forget that England were involved in a similar controversy just two years later at Euro 2012, when uh, we scored against uh, the Ukraine. Uh, it was uh, cleared off the line, and uh, it actually ended up with Ukraine getting knocked out. It touches on a point that you made yourself about these things evening themselves out. Arguably the most famous did the ball cross the line happened in our own backyard in 66 uh, when um, uh, Jeff Hurst um, was allowed his hat-trick uh, against Germany. But it was a key time, wasn't it? Uh, the Kazakhstan linesman, as he turned out to be, not the Soviet one, uh, allowed the, or Azeri linesman, I think it was, uh, allowed England to, to score that goal. Um, these things do even themselves out. Um, that is true. And I've got to say, if the technology is accessible and cheap enough... Uh, that it can go through the game 
from grassroots to elite, then I'm all for it. But I'm just worried that there's a slippery slope. Luther said it as well, that the pitches in the Championship and indeed the Premier League are positive bowling greens compared to the quagmires of the marshes that uh, uh, lesser players have to play on. Uh, but it's more than that. Sometimes, you know, the sponsorship might change, the money changes everything. As Luther mentioned, of course, we have huge promotion and relegation issues, particularly this season in May and coming in August at the start of next season, when television revenues for Premier League clubs increase by 70%, which means that the teams that get relegated in the Premier League may find it increasingly difficult ever to get back to the Premier League again. And for those that get promoted, they get promoted into a land of milk and honey hitherto unseen. So there is an argument for uh, videoing uh, all goal situations, but I am concerned that it should be cheap enough technology to be able to be brought in through as much of the game as possible. Mayor Dad Masoudi, this uh, slippery slope argument that uh, Johnny uh, mentioned there uh, earlier, is, mm -hmm. that, is that a valid concern for you as well, that the people who are advancing this, if it works, then, then they'll start calling for some sort of instant re replay to, to, be, uh, to be used for things like uh, offside decisions and, and penalties and, and all the rest of it, and, and then the human element of the game gets taken out? Um, see, I would like to raise another point. Uh, pitch conditions is one thing, rules of the game is another thing. Yes, pitches are different at the Premier League level, at the Championship level, and, and football is beyond the European borders. Pitches are all in different. We had the Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa recently. The semi final was played on a very, very poor pitch in Africa. The, the, universality, the universality of football will be undermined. We will have two rules of the game, one for the rest of the world and poorer nations, and another one for richer nations, who are basically drawing the television viewership. But the appeal of football is its universality. Is when I was a kid, I was imitating to be Luther Blissett in my backyard. I didn't have a goal line technology, but I, Luther Blissett, was a hero for many kids around the world when he played for Watford, when he went on to play for AC Milan. And the game's children play on the pitches in Ghana, in, in the Middle East, everywhere is basically the same size as... The rules of the game are the same. So if you bring in this goal line technology for, for let's say, whether a goal every 10 years is you know, the ball past the line or not, then there are far more frequent incidents in football that affect the results of the game. A World Cup qualifying game in the Middle East in 2001, 33 minutes between Bahrain and Iran in Maname, 33 minutes of the 90 minutes of the game was wasted as a result of sportsmanship. And All then right. another team qualified. So FIFA should be looking at that. In Latin, this is, again, in Latin America, it's an endemic problem. There are bigger issues in football. Racism being one, that Luther Blissett uh, uh, is championing that cause, anti-racism. So uh, to me, it's the bottom of the list. And this is something that can easily, easily and inexpensively be rectified as long as you involve the fourth official in the, in the decision making. But we had, we had a fourth official uh, in um, the game that uh, Johnny was talking about, uh, the uh, Ukraine-England um, uh, game in Euro 2012. And... Um, Nothing, nothing changed. It didn't look like he was able to do anything, anything there. The ball crossed the line, uh, and, the, and the decision, there was no decision made. No, it was the line referee. I'm talking about the fourth official who sits in the middle of the pitch with a monitor immediately next to him. And he sees the instant replay, and he can, as long as he's allowed and can communicate what he sees, what he sees is what billions of people around the world see. If he can if he can be afforded the opportunity to communicate that instantly to the main official in the middle of the pitch, because the line referee, his vision, it, sometimes, because there's inside the six yard box, sometimes there are 10 players. So where the ball is, there could be like three defenders around the ball. He, he can't be blamed for that. But whereas the fourth official, the, the reserve referee, let's call him the reserve referee, who sits at halfway line outside the playing field, and, and puts up the number for uh, substitutions, he has ac instant access to a monitor right. that is on his table. 
Let's let's get some. Uh, let's take a look at some of the action we've been getting uh, on Facebook uh, on this because we put in, put this question on our Facebook page earlier in the day. Michelle Sigma says it is about time. There are constant mistakes during high stakes games, and when these mistakes occur, there's a pretty overwhelming consensus on embracing this sort of technology. Arguments about how it would go against the spirit of the game are nonsense. Taib Rais Ali adds simply, goal line technology ruins the drama of the game. Bad move. And this from Sean Lawyer, who says, look, I love the human error aspect of the game, but if the ball crosses the line or not, something like that should be monitored. I propose a question to all that say it will take excitement away and won't a goal going in make a match more exciting and can change the whole complexion of a match and create more entertainment than if it didn't. Um, Luther, if I could turn back to you uh, on this. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the point was made uh, earlier that um, bringing in this sort of technology could take away part of the the, the, the charm of, of, of the game of football, if I can put it that way, is that we can have these endless debates about whether or not the ball crossed the line in 1966 and so on and so forth. And that's that's part of the appeal of, 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 of the game that, that the fans love about it. It is, yeah, it's a very important part of the game, but we mustn't forget that was an awful long time ago and the world changes. Football has even changed from, uh, from, from the way it, was, uh, where it was run and everything in those days. So it's a different game that we have now. And again, I'll repeat, it's the financial aspect of what the game now incorporates, which makes it so important that we actually do something about this because a goal being given or not on the, on the say-so of somebody seeing it cross the line or not, you know, it just costs so much. I mean, I was at a game, Watford played Chelsea in the FA Cup a number of years ago, and a very similar thing happened after about 10 minutes of the game. Um, a Watford player had a shot, hit the crossbar, came down, and there was a debate, was it in, wasn't it, or not? You know, the goal was, um, was given, I think, but technology, if they look back on it, the ball hadn't all completely crossed the line, so, you know, but it, but it happens. Um, for me, it, the, the, the technology with the, giving the goal it, it counts for an awful lot because it does add to that excitement because when a goal does go in immediately you, you know the other t opposition now can't no longer think we're just going to take it easy we've now got to go out and try and get this goal back when it happens it doesn't break up the spontaneity of the game I think if they start to introduce it into other areas so it's offside and all these other things that's the one fear I have about technology coming into the game and the thing about the fourth official um, taking part in making decisions I think that also is giving um, that decision making taking that away from the actual referee which is what I don't like about it the referee is the sole person in charge of the game and if he's going to get prompted by somebody outside to have a look at it and say no I'm not so sure that is the right thing to do because then people will say then you should then use that for other incidents for offsides for fouls for off the ball incidents and things like that those things I think can look at for fouls off that can be looked at in retrospectively after the things happen and then they can take um, take whatever judgment needs to be made on that but for me the it um, it's something I think will add to what right. the game is all about because it will make it very clear it's a goal or not a goal. Johnny Gould, you, you, the point was made earlier about how England seemed to have uh, figured uh, quite a lot in some of these controversial decisions. Is that is that a coincidence, do you think? Or is it the fact that uh, because England is, is such a, a high-profile team in, in the global game and they have uh, players who all play in the, in, the, in the very popular English Premier League, that that made a difference? I mean, if, if it perhaps had been involved uh, the, the 2010 World Cup, for example, if that involved a, a less prominent team, would we still be having this debate? It better be a coincidence, <laughs> otherwise there'd be a lot of questions asked upstairs. No, I think um, obviously England make headlines, but equally, if it had happened to Italy or Spain or Germany, um, then uh, obviously the same issue would have occurred. Um, there's no doubt that the FA and the Premier League have international clout, perhaps uh, not uh, at FIFA, but uh, in and around the game, perhaps uh, at UEFA and at club level. Um, but uh, certainly it has helped that the goal was scored in one of the most famous of international fixtures, England versus Germany, and scored by, or not scored, so to speak, by Frank Lampard that certainly put it onto the front pages. And it was something that Sepp Blatter did a U-turn on, quite a rare one. I really had to uh, blink and double check when I first saw uh, Blatter right. saying that video evidence should be part of it, I must say. All right, on that note, we're going to have to uh, leave it. I want to thank all three of my guests, Luther Blissett, 
in London, Johnny Gould also in London, and from Dubai, Merdad Masoudi. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Remember, if you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Hazem Seeker. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.